Manhattan folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. How's everybody doing today? I'm here to talk about the Battleship Texas 3D video. But a little bit before that, I've had a commenter, KLS and C85, say that we know the front of the ship is floating, but we don't know about the rear of the ship. He seems to think that one can float without the other. Maybe they can. I don't know. But he's uh, asked me to prove that stern is floating, and uh, that's going to require two more trips out there. No big deal. I'm nearby. I can do that. So all I've got to say, KLS and C85, is challenge accepted. No. One more thing before we get into the video. I know uh, I watch a lot of videos myself, and uh, pretty much everybody is begging you to subscribe, click the bell, and all that stuff. So I'm not going to bother you with that. You know what? You know what to do if you want to do it, and uh, you know if you want to subscribe, that button is just right down there, that red one. But I'm not going to bother you about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a red one down there. Yeah, yeah. All you got to do is click on it. Uh huh, and you'll subscribe. But I'm not going to buy the, bother you with that information. Everybody else does. I'm not going to do that. But hey, if you do that, if you click on the red button, that little bell thing will come up right next to it. Click on the top one. Another commenter that has done the same project before. She ended up taking 900 photos of the ship. I have not seen uh, her result. She is going to get a copy to me, uh, hopefully, if she can find it, she said. And I would love to take a, take a gander at that, see what it looks like with 900 photos. As you remember from my last video, I had taken a couple of videos. I ended up with 128 videos, and then it started raining, so I had to bring the drone down. wasn't able to get as many videos as I liked, but I thought I'd go ahead and put a map together with what I had. Uh, I want to forewarn you, the map... Uh, didn't come out that great. You can tell what it is, and it looks fairly decent. But it looks like the Titanic sitting on the bottom. There's just simply not enough photo information there to make it look the way I want it to look. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you because it will be a few weeks before I can get out there and take the rest of those photos and redo that model uh, to get it to the point where I really want it to be. So... Let's take a look, see what I've got. I hope you uh, hope you like it. Like I say, it's uh, it's looking really, really rough right now, but it's worth taking a gander at. Let's take a look, see. I used an online service to do this mapping. Uh, it's dronedeploy.com. Uh, first off, when you start the project, it'll do a 2D map, as you see right here, from above. This was taken at 150 foot altitude. It will take multiple photographs. This is a accumulation of 128 photographs here. And we'll convert that into a, a, a 3D model here in a little bit. First, let's move around the software a little bit and get accustomed to it. I've never used this uh, software. So I'm just kind of searching around, seeing uh, what does what, basically, and what I can do with it. This is the 3D model. Takes it a little bit to progress. It's not quite finished yet, but as you can see, it's very, very rough. There's parts of the hole that are missing, which uh, 
It's just due to a lack of enough enough photographs. Next time I need a no rain day, get more done. It's been raining here in Texas for almost three weeks now, on and off every single day. You can see the blue line going across the top. That's processing information and now it's finished. So let's take a look around the map. Now it's loading again. Putting in a few more photos, I reckon. Let's just wait for that to finish processing. Shouldn't take very long. Take a look around while it's doing that and see what all these options are. From this distance, it doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look great either. You can tell what it is mostly because of where it is. As many of you know, getting used to new software like this, especially uh, software that can be fairly complicated, can, can be time consuming, but I thought I would just show the whole the whole thing that I went through to get this done for you guys. Which it's not finished yet, like I say. It's a lot of work yet to be done on it, but that will get done. Reloading it again here. There's a photograph kind of left and down from the center that is, I'm not sure what it is, but it's severely out of place. It's Part of the ship and the software just did not align that that one photographs correctly i'm sure that will be straightened out in future photo uploads to the website here in a minute i will change a few options and and get us into a a uh photo that's uh, really a condensation or a condensing of, of uh, colored dots to put together. Here we've got uh, where the photos were taken from by the drone, what angle they were taken at. All of them were at a 150 foot altitude, give or take a few feet. There's the individual photos. As you recall from my original video, it was uh, stormy and extremely windy that day, so I uh, felt lucky to get done what I did get done. Processing a new, a different type of image here, the dot image. It will take a few seconds here for it to get all that processed and, and done. Uh, in a way, I like it better than the 3D model, or, or at least at this point. Uh, both of them are missing a lot of information, but like I say, we'll gather that information, add it in, and eventually we'll end up with an entire 3D battleship. We'll be taking a look around the battleship here in a few minutes in 3D. Now, a lot of it, there's the photos again of the individual photos that the drone took. We're gonna take a look around this one here as soon as it's through processing. It's an interesting uh, display. It's not quite as elaborate as the 3D model, but it's it's still interesting in its in and of itself. The water uh, causes problems, I believe, for the for the uh, software to process it. Uh, they say when you're doing the photographs to keep the sky out of the photographs. I'm sure that's because the sky causes problems for the software, but uh, Apparently water causes problems for the software as well. As you can see, those dots are at, are at different heights. Uh, so I'm thinking the software just cannot place that water because it's moving and probably because it has uh, some depth to it. I don't know. I, I really don't understand how the software works. Pretty amazing software. I, I love using it. And that right there looks pretty nice, I think. But if you zoom in on it, it, it does start to show a lot of hollow spots. But from here, it looks pretty decent. It 
almost looks like a 2D photograph, but you can spin this model around and it's obviously 3D, which we'll do here in a little bit. You can zoom in and out of the model, go underneath. Of course, the information underneath is uh, uh, non-existent because the drone can't view under the water, obviously. So we're back here at the 3D model now. We're going to let that process for just a few seconds here, and then we're going to do some zooming in and exploring of this model. The control of the model or the screen to rotate and zoom in is a little bit tricky to get used to, but as I use the software more, that will that will get better and better. You can tell the water in the background there is going uphill, which it you know, obviously does not. It's just confusing the software, I think, the water is. Here you can see that some of the parts of the ship kind of look like they've been melted or they're not complete. And that is simply because the software has not gotten enough information yet to fill in those spaces. I was real hesitant to put this model online or on YouTube, uh, but I know there's a certain amount of you out there that will enjoy seeing what's what's been done so far and knowing that more will be coming when I can get out there and take more photographs, a lot more photographs. Like I say, it uh, kind of looks like it's sitting on the bottom and rusted away like, uh, like some of the photos that I've seen and I'm sure you've seen also of the Titanic. Really rough shape. But I'm happy the way it came out with only 128 photographs and needing about a thousand, I'm guessing, maybe a little bit more. What it looks like right now is uh, I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with it as a completed project, but so far as where it stands, I'm happy with that. You can see the gun mounts there from the uh, deck guns that have been removed and are in the process of being restored. Fourteen inch guns from a distance look good. You zoom in on them and there's pieces of them missing. Uh, they're not quite straight. They kind of look like a melted candle, but that's going to improve. You can see the anchor chains there. See a ladder there right behind that second gun turret. Now the visitor center, well, this is on the back side of the ship here where construction equipment and uh, buildings were at one point in time. Got a little bit of that. You can, you can see there that, uh, old, that uh, steel ramp that was used to take pieces and parts across the water there for repair back when they were repa repairing the hull. The uh, trees and all that are not very defined. I didn't really concentrate on that area. Really wanted to get the ship in. You can see the uh, tourist bridge there that leads to the ship and the uh, tourist building that once housed the ticketing and souvenir area. Uh, zoomed in close, those do not look very good at all. They're real melty. Here again, we can see where the photographs were taken from and at what angle they were taken. Uh, the ones down the center were taken in a straight down position and the ones around the edges were taken at an angled position facing toward the ship. Now the software does all that by itself. You simply outline the area you want to map and uh, you let the drone go and the software does everything else, which is a real plus.
conning tower looks really nice. The radar uh, is blurry because it's moving. So each photograph that got a shot of the radar in it, the radar would have been in a different position. And some of the conning tower here again on the left, the individual photos of the ship. This area right here is that photograph I was talking about that uh, it's been placed out of its position. Don't really know where it should be. Hopefully that will correct itself in future photo uploads to the website. Controlling this uh, rotation and zooming of, of the photograph or the ship or the 3D model is a little bit cumbersome, a little bit, a little bit hard to get used to. It, it moves a lot faster than what you would expect it to. So you have to uh, really slow down on your movements to get where you want to be trying to get a picture here of the walkway, having a little bit of difficulty getting to the walkway, uh, moving the model around. You can see there the uh, tourist buildings and, and the walkway that goes across to the ship. There's that piece that's really out of place right there to the left. Overall, I really like how it came out. Still needs, like I keep saying, a, a lot of work and that work's going to be put in on it. And we're gonna wind up with a great model. But for only 128 photographs, I think uh, got a pretty decent model right now. Okay, so there you have it. That's what I've got so far. I know it's not real impressive, but I kind of like it. So keep in touch. I don't want to be like everybody else and say subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. But hey, subscribe. Keep in touch. You'll see the future models. And when you do subscribe, I hate to do it to you, but ring that bell. So you Hi, folks. I appreciate you coming along for this short little ride, which ain't been real short, I know. But thank you for coming along anyway. For right now, it's been a Jeep, a drone, an old man. We'll be seeing you next time.